This is the Shine On You Crazy Daisy podcast, and I'm your host, Trudy Simmons from the Daisy Chain Group, providing platforms for women entrepreneurs to be seen and heard. This platform is for women entrepreneurs that want to hear the real stories of what it takes to be yourself and run a business with all the different hats that you might have to wear. These are the stories of the tenacious, the rebellious, and the resilient women that are working towards the future that they want to build for themselves and their families. Hello and welcome. I am thrilled and excited to bring to you the lovely Liz Ranger from Arise. Liz, thank you so much for being a part of the Shine On You Crazy Daisy book. Tell us about what you do. Um, So I help people to feel financially fabulous. That is my aim um, by helping them review their bills, think about their financial plans for the rest of their life. So they feel happy and fulfilled and financially fabulous. I love financially fabulous. It just says it all, doesn't it? Um, What really surprised me in reading your chapter uh, is that you'd suffered PTSD through your career and knowing you now and seeing how you are that always surprises me to see what people have been through but how did you move through that and what was the trigger for it okay so um my post-traumatic stress disorder came um a little bit uh, out of the blue um when you look back you can see it's coming but actually in in the moment you don't see it um often ptsd is associated with the military sort of war zones etc like that um, but I think there are many other different ways and, and mine came through my role as a nurse. Um, so I was medically retired from nursing. Um, and, you know, at that point, there was a massive loss in my life. It was my career always had been my dream. Um, so I felt I lost my identity. It was also around the time that my children left home. Um, woo-hoo, my children left home. But, you know, there was that loss of identity of mum that everyone was coming to as well. And most of my colleagues were my friends. So it was a difficult time for them because they didn't know how to talk to me or speak to me because they knew I was I was struggling. And I guess I lost my purpose as well. I head into a bit of a wilderness um, and I was offered lots of um, therapy. So with PTSD, you get lots of flashbacks and lots of a myriad of emotions that can affect you both mentally and physically. It was a very uncomfortable journey doing th- therapy um, and uh, there are lots of different types and I tried different types and I think that was important because what felt wasn't working at one point was consolidated with another one in the future. Um, my default was to stay at home, stay safe, not go out, not see things um, and actually that wasn't really a great way to, to sort of, um, I talk in my book about it being a journey and a diversion that was suddenly put on me um, and so really that diversion wasn't going to be solved by being at home all the time. It was hard for my family. It was hard for my husband. Um, but by revisiting different therapies over time, I've been able to sort of find a diversion, which started off with a small network marketing business. Um, it gave me a focus, but it also, because it was network marketing, allowed me to be flexible mm. um, and to do when I felt well and grow on that wellness at that time. So that gave me a flexible space and focus. Um, to there's, go there's such a strength in that, isn't that when you talk about where you were and then how you come through that with different therapies but that light at the end of the tunnel and as you said looking back on PTSD you can see how it was starting but when you look back now and you can see how you came through it it's an incredible journey that you've been through and to have come out and be such a a strong and happy person and so passionate about what you do and not just about what you do but passionate as a person so I was wondering how you knew that this business was the right business for you to consolidate your happiness and make sure that you were feeling safe and secure at all times yeah um so nursing had been my dream um I nursed for 34 years I was um a children's nurse and you know that was about valuing and appreciating people when you're a nurse you know you're you're there to value them to help them get better and I predominantly was a children's nurse and I don't know if you've ever nursed a child but they're extremely honest if you're hurting them they'll tell you you're hurting them whereas an adult we'd probably go oh no 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 it's fine it's fine it's fine you know grin but children didn't they were very honest um And I think really the network marketing was around helping people um, look at their home finances. And it was similar in making people 
feeling better about themselves. So if you know you wasn't directly about their health, but if your wealth's in a good position, it tends to impact onto your health. So they were feeling better in themselves. I think it's really important to add value to people to provide a solution for them. Um, and I, I really found a, a bit of a, a channel and a way through following doing um, a passion test. Um, this is um, led by a lady called um, Janet Bray Atwood um, from America. And it allows you to say, my life is ideal when? And it was very much about, mine kept coming back to people being valued and appreciated. And I think that is so key when you're helping them and also stacking that value that you give to them. So not just, you know, this is what I can give, you know, it, it, they may not be able to do what you are offering because of the costings, but actually saying, well, actually I've got three different costing options here, which would suit you. So you're, you're, you're adding value to them. And by being that person that sort of goes that extra mile, um, is um, happy to sort of help people find solutions. You become an attractive person to other people. And that passion is sort of, you know, they do that old adage, don't you? If you walk down the road and smile at someone, someone's gonna smile back at you because it's so infectious. And the passion comes across and can be infectious as well to, to other people. So I think that's, that's really key. Absolutely. And you're a prolific networker and watching you in networking events and that passion comes across and that infectious way of you being in your life comes across. So it's always it's incredible. And this is why this book's so important and why this podcast is so important is to show people that you may feel like you're stuck somewhere right now, but everybody's been through something and coming out the other side, there's a story to be told. And, and yours is really important and special because of the nursing background as well where really it's that case of I'm a nurse I I could have seen this coming or other people might have seen this coming Mm -hmm. but you still get stuck in what is happening to you and then there's the other side and you find your passion you you can find your happiness and your joy again and and look back on your life with with a lot of goodness in what's happened absolutely Absolutely. Because I mean, I, I wanted to be a nurse from the age I was three. There was a, a, a comic with which was called Twinkle and Nurse Nancy was always looking after her teddies and toys. And and, and it, it came from that. And then I think there was the TV series Angels, which was around that um, when I was in my teens. And, uh, you know, it, it just took there. And I went off to London at 18. It was a massive adventure. I, I'm, I'm an only child. So I had, I wouldn't say I had a sheltered life, but, you know, I didn't, I wasn't, out with brothers and sisters and doing things. So it was, you know, it was a big, um, big step to go and live in. And, and I trained at the Westminster Hospital. So I was very, very lucky because I lived absolutely bang in central London, right? You know, House of the Parliament around the corner, very nice part of London to live in. Um, and, you know, it, but it gave me so many skills. And, you know, I worked with the Department of Health. I went and did national speaking. So suddenly to have lost all that, you know, you lose your, you lose your confidence in yourself, you know, absolutely lose your confidence in yourself and what you're able to do. And I think, you know, um, now re- reassessing and, and looking back at what it taught me and all the things, you know, to be able to um, think about all those communication skills that my nursing taught me, all that networking. OK, it was very predominantly NHS networking, but, you know, you met with different people and those skills are all transferable once I'd come out of that dark tunnel yeah so reflecting back on your life and when you say that about losing your confidence and losing your identity do you now feel like you've found those things yeah absolutely um you know I've now got to be very authentic to me um I actually um gave my title of the book I took a lot of thinking the title of the book because I wanted to use the letters PTSD um <laughs> Oh, nice. you hadn't realised. So it was plan, take, sudden diversion, um, which is why I sort of took it on a, a, a road trip thing. So when someone reads my uh, my chapter, they will understand a little bit more. But it, it was really learning about that I had to be authentic to myself. Mm. Um, I think there was a lot of in nursing, there was an awful lot of giving and not refilling of my own personal cup. Um, and, you know, we've got to love ourselves before we can probably love others um, in, a, in a true, meaningful way. That little villain within, that little voice that tells us we're not good enough. I've got to bat him out of, bat him out. I don't know why he's a man, but I'm going to bat him out of the, out of the way and value and lift myself so I can value and lift others and be consistent. 
you know, and doing that. Yeah. We wouldn't try and take our phones out if they had no battery or, you know, we've done it, haven't we? We've gone out and like, oh, I didn't charge my phone and someone's trying to get you something to do. It's the same. We've got to look after ourselves. Um, so looking back, I reflect and there's a lot of good in my life, a lot that I'm very thankful for. Um, I still very love, I do miss nursing. I can't say I don't, you know, I'm, I'm that person that watches all of the A&E programs and all of this thing. I'd like to do the diagnosis before they do, you know, it's that kind of thing. It's still there. Yeah. Um, but those trials and tribulations that I went through with the PTSD have made me a better version of myself and has given me choices. I, if I was still nursing, I would have been nursing probably to retirement age, which is around, I think, 67 now. And now I have choices to be able to, you know, do things with the family. I live by the sea. So if I want to work in the morning and go to the beach in the afternoon. And I finished my chapter with a quote. And I think this is quite key that Arnold Palmer, who's a professional golfer, said the road to success is always under construction. Mm -hmm. So I think wherever people are in their lives, wherever you may be, if you're in the dark tunnel, if you're climbing a hill, if you're coming down on the other side of the hill and having a bit of a freewheeling woohoo kind of time you know we're all building our, our our life and our construction of our life and construction of our success and actually we you know we can learn for every single one of those stages that we might be in um and how we can do things I love it better I love it and one of the questions that I've been asking is what's one lesson that you would tell another entrepreneur that's starting out and you've just given so many bits of <laughs> for anybody that's listening to go I need that bit I need that bit but if you were going to choose one what what would you tell somebody that's starting out now I think for me it has to be consistency mm -hmm. um that was something that helped me through my PTSD consistently doing something every day now for, for a lot of that time it was getting dressed yeah you know just getting up and getting dressed and once you've sort of mastered one part then oh I might actually cook tea tonight you know not two nights in a row that was far too silly but you know it's that consistency and so it has to be with our business we have to consistently show up we have to consistently have that same um branding that same you know persona of who we are you can't be one person on Facebook and be you know this this and this and then actually when you meet someone on Zoom be someone completely different you have to be authentic and be that same person so I think consistency in sort of all aspects really that is brilliant. Thank you. And if you were going to recommend a business piece of software, what which one would you pick? Um, QuickBooks. Yes. <laughs> so QuickBooks, um, I'll tell a little story now, but my husband and I work in business together and uh, we used to have this spreadsheet for doing our accounts. And every end of the month, there would be a massive round, massive round, because either a receipt had gone missing or something had happened. QuickBooks, you know, you can do it a couple of times a week, takes about five, 10 minutes, produces all the reports for you, everything you need. I feel like I've got my life back and I don't have a monthly row about accounts. I'm not saying we don't have a row about something else. But, you know. There'll be something else that comes up. <laughs> Joys of married life and working in business together. But that's a whole nother chapter for a book. <laughs> No, I, I totally agree. And I think that um, QuickBooks or getting some accounting software in place as soon as possible helps you so much with just being able to know that you're keeping on top of accounts in a way that's going to benefit you with the HMRC as much as anything else. Yeah, exactly. You know, you can spend hours and you can worry about things and actually think, well, I've only got to press one button and it gives me the answer. So, yeah, I definitely would say that's been a real help for us. Liz, what an amazing story you have. And I cannot wait for people to go and read the chapter and and and, and to see you now think, crikey, and anybody can come through these things when they have the positive mindset to be able to, to move through at their own pace. Yeah, and that's that's so important. You know, it's not right. Your chapter is PTSD. Thank you for telling me that. You didn't realise. I had to ask a friend. I said, come on, help me. We've got to do this. We've got to find something that max out PTSD. So uh, I can't completely take the credit for it. Fantastic <laughs> Sudden Diversion by Liz Ranger. Liz, thank you so much. And um, I look forward to getting the book out there and shine on your crazy daisy and take care. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trudy. Thank you so much for watching the Shine On You Crazy Daisy podcast. 
If you've liked what you've seen today, then please make sure that you click the subscribe button to this channel to see more inspiration and motivation as more of these stories keep coming out. And if you want even more, click on the link below this video and go and have a look at the series of books, Shine On You Crazy Daisy, and get even more inspiration and motivation for you and your business.